think you have what it takes to peace control like the pros? Let's find out. The idea behind peace control isn't the most difficult thing to comprehend, but when it comes to actually applying what knowledge we have, well, that's where many of us struggle. That's why today we're going to be looking at REIT, one of, if not the best peace controllers out there. REIT is a controller player who's blown up recently because of his placements, ridiculous ability to W key, and of course, masterful peace control. So who better to learn from than him? And while we look at REIT's clips, I'll be asking you guys questions on what you think his next move should be. That way you can get a good idea of where your peace control level is at by the end of the video. Are you a bot or can you get every scenario right like a peace control mastermind? Don't worry, your teacher isn't grading you. The goal of asking questions is to just increase your knowledge of peace control, so feel free to just watch along. But if you are serious about improving, make sure you check out Pro Guides Coaching. Our coaches know the game inside and out and can help you reach the next level. So if you're trying to improve but can't jump that last hurdle, then schedule a coaching session today at the link in the description down below. So in this first clip, we're going to be looking at using all available information to judge enemy movement to which we can base our next peace control move off of. To start with, Reitz found himself on the defensive end of this mid-game fight. He hears the enemy above him, so he edits out the side, places a cone and floor above, edits the floor to place a wall for cover, and beautifully executes a side jump. At the same time, Reitz's enemy drops into his box below. Based on everything you saw, where do you think Reitz should look for peace control here? On the bottom left? or should he go to the bottom right? Give it a good thinker and feel free to rewind or pause the video if you have to. All right, so Reed decides to peace control the bottom left. First thing he does is swiftly build a wall and notice how he does it before he's even hit the ground by aiming his crossword downward. Then Reed drops a cone for protection, edits a window and slides a cone in his opponent's box. With that cone, they are left defenseless, so Reet lands a big shotgun tag and instantly resets into holding the wall. Holding the wall after a reset is an incredibly important step as it allows Reet to keep control of the wall. After that though, he goes for another edit, whiffs, but gets the far wall which he edits again to finally secure the kill. Alright, so why did Reet decide to peace control the bottom left? Well, it has to do with what options were available to his opponent. When they fell into Reed's box, the only direction the enemy could have gone was through their wood wall at the bottom or out to this space on the left. But since most players tend to choose the path of least resistance, aka the open spot to the left there, that's where Reed decided to go for peace control. So while they might have not ended up where Reed decided to peace control, he took an educated guess based on an analysis of his surroundings and got it right. Being able to analyze the layout of a box fight matters a lot, and in this case, it allowed Reed to read his opponent and easily pick up the frag. So in this next clip, we're gonna be looking at a question a lot of people seem to ask, whether you should shoot or go for peace control first. In this example, Reed's W King at Starks when he heads upstairs and spots an enemy over peaking their angle way too much. What do you guys think Reed should do in this situation? Place a wall immediately or shoot first, then place a wall? Okay, so in this case, Reed shoots first and then places a wall. His opponent tries to do the same, but they're too slow to the punch. Reed follows up with an edit and further wall and cone control, but his opponent barely moves. So Reed cleans up the kill on the spot. But when it comes to shooting versus going for peace control, typically you're better off going for the shot. Big chunks of damage, like from a shotgun, can heavily tip the skills of a fight in your favor and the benefits of going for the shot first far outweigh any potential negatives. If Re were to wall first, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but he wouldn't get that 50 damage in and his opponent would have more time to build cover and back up, making the fight last longer than it needs to be. Sometimes there are situations where you want to go for peace control first, but when you've got a clear angle on your opponent, remember folks, always go for the shot, then follow up with peace control. All right, on to clip number three. All right, so let's keep it rolling. This time, looking at the importance of speed. In this example, Reet runs into someone at Starks who questionably shockwaves into the air. Reet cracks her shield and expects them to land on the roof, but they actually land next to Reet and sneak a shotgun hit on him. So Reet goes for the wall into an edit, but accidentally pre-edits, taking another hit. Now Reet's in big trouble. Still, he manages to slip away, and with his opponent low, he's not going to let them heal up. So. He shockwaves behind the guy and goes for a shot into wall placement. At this point, Reed has a couple of options. He could place a cone and floor above them, edit through both, cone the bottom and box them in, or he could edit the wall, cone the top and bottom, and wall off all exits. What do you guys think Reed should do? So 
So Reed chooses to edit the wall, cone the top and bottom and wall off the back. Most players first reaction to this is to separate with a ramp in this situation. So by coning immediately, the enemy tries to build but can't. They just get caught with their blueprints out and Reed sends them off to the loading screen. This boxing technique is a staple when it comes to peace control and it's surprisingly straightforward to pull off. After you get control of a wall, you quickly edit it and do a bottom to top crosser movement while placing cones. This should get a cone in the box and one up top. Then you switch to your walls and block off all exits, usually with a horizontal swipe of your crosshair. All of this can be done really quickly as long as you have efficient crosser movement, making this one of those moves you have to know and practice often if you want to be good at peace control. But let's talk about why Reet made this choice. What it comes down to is speed. If Reed cone floored up top and double edited down instead, his opponent would have had time to ramp above themselves and escape to a new box. But since Reed knows the importance of speed, the instant went for the quick option and it paid off. We've got crazy methods to avoid 50-50s in this next clip, but first, a reminder that Pro Guides has instant VOD reviews where you upload your game and our pro coaches analyze it to give you detailed analysis in under 24 hours. Try it today to learn all about the mistakes you never knew you were making. The link is down in the description below. Lastly, let's look at a clip that demonstrates how you can ever so slightly change a common peace control maneuver to avoid 50-50 fights. So Reed, being the madman he is, decides to shockwave into a trio as they're rebooting. He's patient with his first shot, but still only manages a moderate hit. After that, he ramps up and edits through his wall to trade shots. Reed gets a ramp over his opponent, a wall behind them, and a wall to the right. From here, what do you think he should do? Wall his left, then flip the ramp and go for a shot, or move out to the left, floor and wall from the outside, edit a window and go for a shot? Reed's low on health here, so he needs to avoid taking a 50-50. That's why he's going for option two. He's gonna move out to the left, place a floor and wall from the outside, then he edits the middle window for a nice right hand crouch peek and gets the knock. And by the way, yes, Reed W keys as a solo in trio arenas. He's that nuts. Anyways, notice how Reed is immediately building after every shot, a step vital to getting peace control before your opponent can. When Reed gets this enemy trapped here, he edits and lands a second shot. But what I love is how he switches up his angle of approach to something less obvious. So instead of editing through his stairs, he drops down and attacks from below something his opponent doesn't see coming. <laughs> Rest in peace, buddy. For this last skill, I want you to pay attention to how Reed executes this mongrel classic. First, he takes the wall with his AR, something that can make wall taking a lot easier as it gives less time for your opponent to expect it. But when he starts his wall edit, he goes from the bottom middle to the left middle. This makes it so his crosshair is already in the position needed to easily follow up with a ramp edit. It's small, but for everyone out there, especially those on a controller, you've got to make sure your edit and crosshair movements are efficient like Reed's is here. Anyways, just like that, an easy trail wipe for Reed thanks to this ridiculous peace control. All right, guys, it's recap time. What did we learn? Let's start with game sense tips and then move into the techniques we saw. First, predicting enemy movement. Reed easily guessed where his enemy would move by analyzing all structures in his environment and knowing which options were available to the enemy. He chose the most likely option and was right. Reed almost always went for a shotgun shot before going for wall placement since it barely wastes time and allows for extra damage which can completely change the fight in your favor. And when Reed has the option, he boxes players in by starting with a wall edit. This is typically the fastest method to ensure that you can get a cone in their box immediately and in most cases, your opponent won't be able to respond once you pull out your shoddy. Okay, what about techniques? Well, the ones I think you should head into creative and practice right now are the full box in where you edit a wall, slide in a cone and wall off the exits, the bottom wall into full box and the side step on your ramp into a window edit. A big part of effective peace control is getting the build patterns down. So run some drills of these techniques up until the point where you feel you've gotten the muscle memory down. That way, when you're in game, you'll be pulling them off quicker and with fewer mistakes. So how'd you do? Did you pick the choices Reap made? Let us know in the comments. But overall, this was only a fraction of the peace control knowledge a player like Reap possesses. If you're interested in seeing more, make sure to check his pages out at Reap LOL. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like the video and sub with the bell turned on so you don't miss the next edition. Once again, my name is Ali aka Beyond and I'll see you guys in the next video.